if you will trust me in this season, and if you will trust me in this hour with your all, with your, with your faith, if you will activate your faith, I will bring you to a deeper depth and uplift you, elevate you to a higher place of consciousness, to a higher place of the mind of Christ. I will take you from the pits to the palace. I will now remove you from the dungeon like I did with Joseph, and I will place you in Pharaoh's court to be my shining light amongst a place of great wickedness and gross darkness. I will anoint you with the spirit from on high. I will place the spirit of wise counsel and wisdom. Hallelujah. And you will begin to rule with wisdom and grace. I will begin to place the shepherd's staff in your hand and teach you how you, can, how you can go out and come in, how you are to conduct yourself. I will teach you how to grow crops. I will teach you how to live off the land. I will give you an eye for agriculture. I am displacing you and placing you in the place of your destiny and your purpose. Now is the time in the season where you're going to begin to find out the true reason why you were born. You're going to find out why it is that certain things that have society captivated, such as sports, music, TV, certain things, certain worldly pursuits, you're going to find out why it has never caught your soul, why it has never been interesting to you. You're going to find out why it is that you never went to college. I'm going to show you the reason and purpose because I'm removing you out of one system, the beast system, and placing you in another place, placing you in another country, placing you in another time zone, another area of this planet. I'm going to displace you, and you're going to follow me where I'm going to lead you and take you to the place, take you to the people, take you to the village, the remote location where you will spend out the rest of your days. I'm getting ready to uproot you, says the Lord. You're getting ready to change. You're getting ready to shift. And you're getting ready to go off the grid. Look, look for my watch sign in this hour, and you're going to go to the place where I have assigned for you. I already have connections, and I already have links for you to go. I have already set up the people. And I will provide for you everything that you need, and you will lead a healthy, prosperous, and happy life. You're going to realize that it was never about the fame. You're going to realize that it was never about the church people. You're going to realize that it was never about the church building, your church family. You're going to realize that it's about doing what the Father's will is. And that transcends all man's concepts of what God is and what they think. Says the Lord. Hear this word of the Lord. Receive this word of the Lord. Meditate. Ponder it upon it in your heart. Because you shall be visited in a dream. And this word shall be given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. I want someone to lift up a song. I want someone to honor the Lord in song right now, this moment. Whatever Can song I pops sing? Your heart. Go right Is that ahead. okay? I knew, I knew it would be you to go right ahead. I was just going to see if <laughs> I was going to be a deep. Yeah. All right, Lord. All right. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord, I worship you, I worship you, for your name is holy, holy, Lord, for your name is holy. Holy Lord, for your name is holy, so holy, Lord, let the weight of your glory cover us, 
Let the light of your kingdom reign. Let the truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the weight of your glory, let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. Amen, Lord. Amen. 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 This song is very personal to me because when I was a part of my first church, before I transitioned out of there, I was a part of the praise dance team. And this was one of the most anointed songs, in my opinion, that we had danced. And the literal glory of God came down in that church. So, so don't take these meetings for granted. I told you, this is a, this, this is a, a, a collection of God's prophetic servant across the globe. And even if you're not prophetic, don't get put up on me constantly, constantly saying prophetic, prophetic, prophetic. You may not be generally prophetic, but the fact that you're on this call, you're, you're prophetic. Just because you don't prophesy, hello don't mean that you're not prophetic. She sang prophetically not knowing that this was one of the songs that I love. Let the way that, I think it's by Will, uh, um, what's his name? Something Wilbur, right? Wilbur Paul. Paul Wilbur. Yes. You see? So this is God confirming that this right here is, is, is very special um, to his heart, what we're doing right now. Whatever you do as unto the Lord, whatever God, because he puts things in your heart. He puts visions in your heart, things that you would love to do. It's not just you say, oh, I'm just, just me and I just want to do this. Sometimes it is. But a lot of times it's God's heart beating within your heart. And as I begin to meditate upon it this morning, I got a little discouraged, you know. And God said, No. Get on that line and teach my prophets. Speak to them for me. Because some of them cannot hear God like how you hear God. Some of them don't even believe in themselves. Because everyone around them has discouraged them and, and, and abused them, used them, rejected them. They don't even believe no more. That's why they can't hear me no more. Get on that line and teach them and encourage them so that they can get receive a restoration. Eek, su, riha, pum, eh. A, a restoration of the gift that I placed them, the original gift. God wants me to let you know that you're about to hear him again like he used to. You're about to hear him with clarity again. God wants me to let you know that you're about to see those dreams and visions again like you used to. It hadn't left because you fell in sin. It's still there, and you're receiving a restoration of it right now. Let the weight of your glory fall on us, and it's going to fall. The more we fill up this tank, which is our spirit man, this computer, you're going to see that we're getting upgrades. We're getting stronger processes. You need to know that you are God's technology. You are Yahweh's technology. There's so many things I want to break open and, 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 and reveal to you. And a, a, a hawk just flew over my head right now. And that's, if anybody knows the sim, symbolism, of a hawk, please let me know, because it just flew over my head a while ago, and the spirit had it's to freedom. notice it and look at it. Freedom. Thank you. Hallelujah. Who is that, Dejean? Yep. God bless you, prophetess. God bless you. Thank you for coming on. Hallelujah. Freedom. Freedom in the spirit. Fly. Like a, like a spirit. Hawk has good eyesight as well. Also, the hawk screech makes mm, animals of prey tremble. Do you want to become a terror to the devil? Let me hear you right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. See, 
by the time I'm done with you, when I give a call and response, I'm going to have to mute the lies out because y'all going to be screaming at the top of your lungs because the confidence, your confidence, not cockiness or arrogance. You need, to, you need to understand that in order to be a prophetic vessel, in order to be a servant of the Lord, you need confidence. It has nothing to do with you um, trying to appear humble or actually being humble. You can be humble and have confidence. Or else how are you going to stand when people are, are coming up against you People that should be supporting you, people that have once have supported you when you're doing something that God told you and they're telling you God ain't tell you that. That you're not hearing from God. How you gonna how you gonna how you gonna do it if you don't have confidence in the God in you? How? How you gonna prophesy or um, administrate in your different prophetic manifestations, because like I said, not all of you are going to be prophesying and saying, say the Lord. Some of you will be prophesying in dance. You will be acting out the word of the Lord. Some of you will prophesy in art. You will be drawing out the word of the Lord, the visions of the Lord. Some of you will be, some of you will be prophesying in your books. Mm, you better hear me today. Some of you will be prophesying in the clothes that you wear, the hairstyles you wear. Right now, I'm prophesying. My hair is prophesying. My hair is sticking up. My hair is saying, is reaching out for God. Y'all ever seen um, Maggie Simpson? Uh, how her hair looking like spikes? That's how my hair looks right now. My locks are sticking up, reaching out, making contact with the divine spirit of God. Because I'm asking for his glory. I'm here. I'm, I'm asking for his glory to fall on me. I need his glory. You need the glory. I was talking to somebody on the phone last night. I don't know if she's on the call right now. But I said, Jesus, Yeshua, was so full of anointing, was so full of the glory of God, so full of the glory of Yahweh, that he could touch, because sometimes he spoke to him, and at other times he, he placed his hands, laid hands on sick. Leprosy is a very dangerous and, if I'm not mistaken, incurable, contagious disease. To the point they, they have their own community, because it is a flesh-eating disease. So you better not touch that. You understand what I'm saying? The man was so full of the power, so full of, and, and, and the spirit kept illuminating, illuminating to me as I was talking about it. He was so pure that no disease, no form of darkness could stand before him and had to break. You need to understand. That's why when you step up in a place, you step up in, a, in your workplace, and you step up anywhere, and you realize it could be a party. And as soon as you step in, the music cuts off. Everybody turn around and look at you. He like, what y'all looking at? Why y'all looking at me like that? Why y'all grilling me like that? They see the light in you. They see the Christ in you. They see the, the spirit of Yahweh resting and seating himself in you. They, they have to turn around and notice, who is this man? Who is this woman? What is it I sense? That just stopped my entire thought process. The servant of the Lord just stepped in. That's what. There's nothing wrong with being confident in that. As a matter of fact, faith is confidence in things you cannot see. I don't know why God got me on confidence this morning. Be confident, servant of the Lord, my brothers and sisters. Be confident in who God has called you to be. And if, as God senses me, I'm going to do my best to be able to be his mouthpiece to help you understand who you are. Hallelujah. I want all of you to prophesy. And I'm going to start putting you on the, on, on, on the spot because it's in you. And you're going to be surprised that as you step into that seat, how stuff is going to start coming to you and flowing through. You're like, what the heck? I didn't know I could do that. Yes. One of my duties and jobs is to pull it out of you. 
Don't get comfortable. In the same spot, you must continually grow. Like Paul said, what reach towards that mark in God? So last week, we were getting into the basis of what is the process, male or female. It's not a male thing or female thing, male or female. What is a prophet? A prophet is, a prophet is basically someone who is a spokesman for a deity or a spirit or a number of spirits, all right? In our case, we are prophets of Yahweh, prophets of the Lord. We only speak on behalf of the Lord, not demons, familiar spirits. No, we speak on behalf of Christ. We speak the words that Christ is speaking, not spirit, for a group of people or a particular individual. No ifs, ands, or buts. So as you allow yourself to be purified, allow your gifts to be purified, as you grow, learn, get good teaching about the prophetic, you will make less mistakes. You won't prophesy to your flesh. You'll prophesy what God tells you. If you don't have a word, shut up. I don't know how else to say it. If you don't have a word from the, somebody say, you know what God said? If you don't hear anything, shut up. Just say, I, I don't hear nothing right now. Because the minute you start getting used to, you know, prophesying when people call on you and, you know, you, you, you start, you start, you start going into the spirit. You start delving into the spirit, diving into the spirit to get a word just to, just to, just to prophesy. You're, you're going, you're, you're off. You're going into a day that you don't do that. And don't allow, hear me in the Holy Spirit, don't allow people to push you into being like that. They call you every time asking for a word of the Lord, shut that spirit down. Because now they're trying to turn you into a soothsayer. You're not a soothsayer, you're not a fortune teller. You don't pop in a quarter. Uh oh, I'm gonna make somebody mad. You don't sow a seed just to get a, and then get a prophecy. And then how that works. If you're gonna sow a seed, sow a seed because God told you to do it. Not because you're trying to get a prophecy. I'm here to tear down falsehoods and build up truth. And I get amen. 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 Hallelujah. I got two more callers that I did not acknowledge. I would like to acknowledge you now. To let us know who you are. Aisha. God bless you, prophetic vessel of the Lord. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm, I'm blessed with having your presence here. Thank you for coming on. Hallelujah. Thank you. Who's the next person? Okay. I guess they're choosing to remain anonymous. God bless you anyway. Let's continue on. Like I said last week, we were talking about um, what is a prophet, and maybe we get to deal with prophets in the Old Testament. Abraham was a prophet. Moses was a prophet. It's probably the, mo- the most popular um, out of the new, out of the Old Testament. But Abraham was also a prophet. Okay, and we begin to tear down the lie that said. Because we have the Holy Spirit, because we have the Bible. Some of you may be in churches like this right now. Because of that, because we have the Holy Spirit, we don't need prophets. So that is, that is a lie. That's not true. Because if the fivefold ministry is no longer needed, why do you still have pastors, right? But you won't have an apostle or prophet. You're not making any sense. The enemy has you in error. Those things will continue until Christ returns. Get that in your head. Don't let nobody tell you you're not a prophet, you're not an apostle, you're not a... If God told you that, that's what you are. Even if you never go by the title, hey, I'm Prophet Travis. You understand what I'm saying? It's not about the title. That title only identifies who who and who you are and what you do. But it ain't your first name and your last name. Hello, somebody. You don't call some of these leaders by their by they title, they will not answer you and take it as a form of disrespect. That's the flesh. Hear me. That is the flesh, pride, and ego then that's not God. Because your apostle, your bishop, I don't care how high they are in the spirit, let me tell you something. That is your, yeah, they may be a, a type of spiritual parent, 
But at the end of the day, that is your brother and sister in the Lord. And unfortunately, they don't look at you like that. They look at you as a peon and as a, a cash cow. Have, am I making sense? Have you ever been treated like that? I need to hear right now. I need to hear your participation. Just say amen if that's you. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. It's a us and them mentality. That is your brother and sister in the Lord. Okay, elder brother or sister, but they don't treat you like that. Because you have a nice little purple cape and the little, the little, the little, you know, red or purple cap, and you got a cross in your left po- uh, a shirt pocket, and you got a little golden staff, and you got that nice old, you know, robe looking like print. Can I cloud on this morning? You got a white collar on your neck. You too high. Don't know. Don't you, you? You can't relate to nobody no more. You understand? You can't relate to anybody anymore. You, you're too. You're high and mighty. Nobody can touch you. That's a bow before you kiss your ring. That's a stand when you walk into a room. You're not God. You're not God. They look like magicians in the pulpit. You're not God. We're all kings and priests, kings and queens in the kingdom. Who are you? They won't lift a, lift a finger. They don't care about you. Just keep giving that money. Keep giving, keep giving us your offering. Keep giving us your life. I get richer, you get poor. I'm trying to help you see something, church. I'm trying to help you. Y'all the truth, church. I'm trying to help you see something trying to help you see and notice a system so you can get away from it. Some of you know, but because that's all you know and you're scared because you don't think you're going to make it without going to a church building, you keep going and you see the foolishness. God is going to hold you accountable because you know the truth. I have to tell you the truth. I got to tell you. It's going to hold because you know. So because you know, you have a responsibility to do something about it. Some of you guys have been calling your way for a long time, for years. And you've been disobedient. You just, you're just too scared. You're too worried about what people think or think of you. Jesus told you, he said, man, don't worry about them. They do not have a heaven or hell to put you in. You need to worry about the one who can kill your body and your soul. That's what you need to worry about. Amen, prophets. God's holding you to a higher standard. So there's some things that he's been talking to you about, been trying to get you delivered from. It's about it's about that time. It is about that time. Hallelujah. Am I still connected? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay. Prophets in the New Testament. After the establishment of the church, God still used prophets. New Testament prophets fulfill the same functions as their Old Testament counterparts. They represent the voice of the Lord to the church and world. However, this is done alongside other believers in ministry. They are to be preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They challenge. This is, this, is, this is one of the prophet's jobs, okay? They challenge believers in their walk with the Lord. I'm challenging you. That's why you hear me talking in more of a stern tone than some of you that have my personal number. Oh, you challenge is so sweet. And this, I don't like this new child. He mean. No. <laughs> I have to, you know. Give it to you how God gives it to me because he's 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 a he's a he's very loving and kind, but he's also a very strict parent because he sees our potential. So they call the church to change and repentance and real and reveal future events. In addition to the above functions, the New Testament prophet serves as a foundational ministry of the church. So. I want you to know that you are going to be used to be a foundation of the church. Remember, I'm not talking about the four walls. I'm talking about the universal body. 
God, in other words, God's going to use you, little old you who think you are nobody, to build up somebody. You, you ought to get excited right now because you're that, you're, you're that important. You are somebody. On the day of Pentecost, God established his will for man's worship. He no longer, listen, I need you to open up your big old ears and hear this. On the day of Pentecost, God established his will for man's worship. Listen. He no longer wanted to be confined to a building represented by God's command to worship at the temple. But this is, this is where we are right now. But dwell in the heart of man. His will was for the believer to be his temple. As he abides in each individual, they corporately become the temple of God. Peter called the believers stones who are built together to form a spiritual house or temple where God could dwell. First Peter 2 and 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. I need about two people to tell me what's showing up for you about what I just said, how God didn't want to be. He doesn't want to be confined to a building now, how he now lives with inside you, which means, you could create a tabernacle anywhere you at right now, not specifically and only in the four walls of the building. I need about two participants to tell me what you're getting from this right now. That's um, what I'm getting from that is because we spoke about this last time where you're not necessarily confined to the church or you're not a prophet of a church. You're a prophet of God, so you can be anywhere and where God is telling you to speak with to someone or God is giving you a message for someone, you're going to release that message to whoever the individual is, regardless of where you're at. You can be at the gas station, you can be at the store, you can be at work, you can be anywhere. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, if we if we have the mindset in thinking that we're only confined to just church, this is the only way we're supposed to be used, nowhere else, we're limiting God, putting him in a box. I know he probably, we hear that a lot. God doesn't want us to put him in a box. He wants us to be open and allow, because the spirit of the Lord, it says in the Bible, where the spirit of the Lord is his freedom. He wants us to freely rule with the spirit of God. Just like it says, wherever the, uh, I think, wherever the wind blows, something about the spirit of God, I don't know that scripture right now, Lord. <laughs> so, um, so, um, you know, if you're not in church for a little while, which that's okay. You got it. The main thing is sometimes we get saved in the church. Sometimes some of us maybe got saved in the room or in the parking lot, you know. Come on, come on. We always have church, of course, but, like, right now I'm not in church right now. I still have my personal relationship with God. That's what matters at the end of the day because we have to work at our salvation with fear and trembling. So even if I'm not in church right now, I still know who God is. I still worship him. I still pray to him. I still hear him. He still speaks to me. That's most important. He can still use me. I don't, need, I don't just need the church to be able to move in the gifts of the spirit because I'm obeying God. I'm doing what God has called me to do, not what man has called me to do. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> Jesus name. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. And let, me, and let me just say this real. Let me preface it. Listen. You may hear me, you know, clap back on a lot of things the church is doing. Let me just make this clear. I am not anti-church. I know that could be offensive. Why am I talking about church? Listen, I was a part of. I was. I was in church. When I say in church, I mean like a member of a church, right? Since I was eight years old until 22 is when I like. I guess you could say went out on my own. I guess you could say ventured out of the village on my own for a search for higher truth. That's my journey. You understand what I'm saying? You may still have a um, role in, as far as organizational church is concerned that God may have called you to. So don't take, you know, me, my satire or whatever in such an uptight or offensive way. Some of you, like I said, may be where I'm at right now. Some people, like I was telling my mom about my aunt, she's more like a, 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 a renegade, like a rebel. She loves God. She has a relationship with God, but I, I was telling her, and her sisters don't understand. These are my aunts, because you know, back you know, back in the day, they used to have like ten, thirteen kids, all right. 
So her sisters, they're not understanding the type of person my aunt is. And I was telling my mom, I was like, yeah, they're not understanding. They're, they're kind of come off, coming off churchified. Oh, you know, well, the church, you need to come to church, and that's why you need to be in church. I'm like, they're not understanding that that type of person, they cannot be in no church because they don't have that type of spirit to sit there. You understand what I'm saying? Take orders from a man and, and a leader or whatever. They don't have that type of spirit. They're going to ask certain questions. Certain things don't make sense to them, and they're not going to hold their tongue. They're going to they're gonna say what they have to say. And a lot of churches don't like that because they look at you as rebellious and da 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 da. You see, so you have to understand what your type is. Me, I'm not the type of person to be controlled by anybody. Am I saying I'm a total rebel? Absolutely not. I, if you if you have met me in person and seen me in a church, you will clearly see that I'm a well-behaved individual. You understand what I'm saying? So that's not my problem. My problem is just the control, the manipulation that goes on, and I, I feel like it's my duty to unmask it. But if you're in church, church is good. If that's where you're at right now in your development, flow with that. What I'm saying is, if you see bull in front of you, right, you can see it and you can smell it. <laughs> Acknowledge it, but don't be a part of it. Don't, don't, don't allow it to control and, and, and mess up your life. That's what I'm saying. Be wise and be conscious. Amen. So you don't want to be confined to a particular building or a temple. Next is uh, 1 Corinthians 6.19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? With the new covenant, the temple of God is now in the hearts and minds of the people. Their actual body, your body, somebody, somebody say your body. Your body. Your body. Your body became the habitation of God. Did you just hear what I said? The God of the universe says uh, is now dwelling inside of you. I mean, just just chew on that. That should be enough to close this class. But I ain't gonna do that. But <laughs> just 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 let that mind be in you. Let that mind be in you when you're about to sit. When you're about to do something you ain't got no business doing. It's probably gonna stop you. Not that you need to be afraid, per se, like he's going to kill you, but you, know, you, you follow what I'm saying. <laughs> His presence is always surrounding you. And when you worship and you fast and you do spiritual things that he has assigned for you to do to help your spiritual growth, that presence around you gets stronger. The angelic presence that, that is assigned to you gets stronger. Your prayers have more power. When you're not doing those things, then... It is the opposite. You get, it gets weaker. Mm. Therefore, if the, if the church consists of people joined together by the presence of the Holy Spirit, then the foundation of, for the church would consist of people also. As Paul wrote to the believers, he revealed to them a very important truth. He told them that they, the church, were built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ being the headstone. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. I hope you guys are taking notes. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the buildings fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together for an habitation through the Spirit. Remember, this is prophetic university, so this is not just a prayer call. This is have your ears tickled. No, this is this is school. This is education, kingdom education. That's why the Lord gave me the name for the ministry called Yahshua's Nabim. Nabim is Hebrew for prophet, plural, a group of prophets, company of prophets, whatever you want to call it. Yeshua's Nabim training center. Because a lot of times you can't flow in what you don't know because you don't have no training in it. All right? 
In the above scripture, we discover certain truths. Paul was writing to a primarily Gentile office. However, we must understand that the foundation that he stood upon was the same as the Jewish believers. Jewish and Gentile believers alike operated in the foundation established by the New Testament apostles and prophets. The church, like the New Covenant, was founded upon people, namely the apostles and prophets. From this, we understand that since we will reign with Christ, God allowed man to have an active role in the establishment of the church. This is awesome. I reiterate to you again, you are a foundation stone, which means that God is going to use Taisha to build up somebody, build up a group of people, a community of people. As insignificant as she may feel about herself, God has called her to be a foundation and be a foundation layer. She's going to build and and, and found some people in some areas of Christ like living. She's important. Williams is important. They leave, the gene. I, we are all important. I'm building up your spirit now. I'm edifying your mind, bringing you these revelations so that you can better build, better understand yourself, better understand what your gifts and talents are so that you can operate it. So you can use it in your tools. Have you ever seen a construction worker without that belt with the tools on and the hard hat? That it makes more sense. He has his toolbox, and he knows intelligently how to use those tools. So it is with you. Listen, this is the revelation. Anybody in this line know about X-Men? I mean, that's an obvious question, but I'm just asking because you don't want to assume. I know about <laughs> yeah. X-Men, right? Yes. Yeah. Listen, we are all X-Men. That's the revelation. If you, didn't, if, if, you didn't, if you didn't catch the revelation of X-Men, is that we're all mutants. We all have, we all are X-Men. Because we all have our gifts. I mean, this is true on that for a little bit. We, we, we are X-Men because we have gifts. All those gifts. And if you notice, the government in that movie was always trying to kill the mutants. <laughs> symbolic of the enemy, always trying to kill God's prophet, always trying to kill those people with those extraordinary gifts. Listen, all of us are golden children. We're anointed. We're called and appointed. You just didn't know who you are. You were sleeping until now. Wow. But now's the time where you're really going to discover yourself. Seriously. Some of you, you already kind of know who you are, but you've just been not, you know, you've just been not practicing being who you are. You mean you have to practice prophesying? Yes, you do. If you're a prophet, you got to prophesy to somebody. How, how are you going to know? How, how are you going to know how to translate and, fix, and, 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 and speak and, and interpret the spiritual stimuli that's coming to your mind to give that person? How are you going to know if you don't practice it, if you don't actually put it into action? That's why the, this school is going to be very unique because I'm not only going to be doing teaching, I'm going to be doing activation exercises, and you're going to flow in your gift. How does that sound? <laughs> um, sounds good. All right. Wonderful. All oh, y'all going to talk about before the phone call is out. Don't hang out. Don't, 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 don't hang out now. <laughs> Right, somebody, I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the end button right now. I'm gone. So don't do it. You gonna you gonna miss this blessing. <laughs> miss the blessing. Hallelujah. All right. Let's see if we can read through this to the end of uh this section. All right. The apostles and the prophets have greater responsibility for the church, especially in doctrinal purity and spiritual direction. As Christ formed the foundation for the new covenant, the apostles and prophets formed the foundation for the church. Their ministries are foundational and continue to be major influences upon the body of Christ. 
The ministries of the apostles and prophets were needed to establish the church, and their ministries are needed presently for the furtherance of the church. Christ's ministry toward us is everlasting. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the, utter, to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hebrews seven twenty four through 25. The book of Acts reveals to us the presence of prophets in the New Testament church. Consider the following. This is in Acts 11, 27 through 28. Please take your scriptures down so you can do further study. Um, and in the days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth or drought, right, throughout the whole world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. The early church benefited from the ministry of the prophets. We discover that the prophets traveled together. Right now, even though we're on the phone, listen, we are in a company. We're in a fellowship. We're traveling together. You, 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 you found your tribe. A prophet of note among them was named Agabus. Through his ministry, the saints were prepared for a drought that came. We need prophets, accurate prophets, true prophets. Because sometimes our environment is so unclean that we can't hear from God no more. I know I'm not the only one that experienced that. I feel like God just went silent and you try to figure out what the heck. We need prophets. We need prophets of the Lord. That's what tell us what that says to the Lord. And we can call and say, you know, can you pray for me? Can you seek the Lord for me? I've been having some problems seeking the Lord. Remember me in prayer. And if there's anything God shows you, please don't hesitate to reveal to me. They responded, so through his ministry, the saints were prepared for a drought that actually happened. They responded in sending help to the brethren that would be affected. Agabus also prepared Paul for the trials that awaited him in Jerusalem through prophetic insight. And it says, and as we tarried there many days, there came up, came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. You'll find that in Acts 21, verse 10 through 11. Aside from the foretelling of future events, we also discover that the New Testament prophet would strengthen and encourage the brethren to his ministry. Acts 15.32 says, And Judas and Silas, being prophets themselves, also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Judas and Silas were recognized prophets in the early church. They accompanied Paul and Barnabas back to Antioch with the elders' response to the requirements of Gentile believers. The above verse demonstrates to us that the prophet's ministry came to push believers forward and establish them in the things of the Lord. In addition, we discover that when Silas joined Paul on his missionary journey, that great ministry followed. Not only did the New Testament prophets reveal future events and encourage the brethren, but also they helped to launch ministry through prophetic insight. So when I do my prophetic counseling on the phone that people will request, in that conversation I have with them, I share with them prophetic insight. I listen to what they have to say. I give my, 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 my perspective. We pray. I prophesy to them. What's the purpose? To help launch them into their ministry, into their purpose, into their destiny. So that's what, one of the things that prophets do. We help to push people into their destiny through prophetic insight. Acts 13, 1 through 2 says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets, plural, and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Nemean. 
which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. In the Antioch church, it is apparent that prophets and teachers exercise the oversight. We find that as they ministered unto the Lord, the Lord spoke. It is likely through one of the prophets to release Saul and Barnabas into the apostolic ministry. Saul, or his name was changed to Paul, and Barnabas were recognized among the prophets and teachers. However, through prophetic ministry, they were called forward to operate in another ministry. The New Testament prophet will do this occasionally. Along with the ministry of the prophets, the book of Acts introduces us to individuals who had prophetic ministries and the gift of prophecy. Now let me just talk a little bit about there are some differences, and, and as we go on in this book, you're going to see the difference between a prophet and someone who maybe has a prophetic anointing or the gift of prophecy. It's two different things. Although they may operate in a similar capacity, it's two different things. And basically the difference between the two is the prophet definitely has the most authority, has the most governmental authority versus someone who just prophesies you know, every now and again or just has a prophetic gift. There, there, is, a, there is a difference. Though it be slight. All right. Um, along the ministry of the prophets, the book of Acts is used to the individuals who have prophetic ministries and the gift of prophecy. After Saul, a Paul's conversion, the Lord spoke to a certain disciple named Ananias in a vision. All right. And that scripture is really long, so I'm not going to read it, but it's in Acts 9 10 through 16 where basically God was telling him, this was right after Saul, um, God had knocked over Paul off of his horse and blinded him where he went on a fast for three days because he was persecuting the church at that time. Now God came to Ananias and gave him what I would call extremely accurate information to the point you would think he was a prophet, but, he, but the Bible doesn't say he was. So the scripture does not identify Ananias as a prophet, but as a disciple. However, the depth of revelation and power that he operated in shows us that he walked in a prophetic anointing. God spoke to him personally. God's interaction with him is similar to how the Lord would speak to prophets. When we consider other, other notable features such as um, figures such as Peter, an apostle, and Philip as an evangelist and one of the seven, it is evident that these men possessed a prophetic, prophetic anointing, though they were not prophets. The scriptures not only reveal to us individuals who were prophets and had a prophetic anointing, but also those who had the gift of prophecy. Philip, the evangelist, had four daughters that had the gift of prophecy. Some scholars want to identify them as prophetesses. However, the most popular translation translations of this passage in Acts only refer to them as having the gift of prophecy. They did not occupy the prophetic office. Okay? From the above scriptures and references, we discovered that the New Testament church had prophets, individ prophets or individuals who had a prophetic anointing, and those who had the gift of prophecy. These gifts were needed then and they are needed now. There are theologians who twist the scriptures. In doing so, they assert that because we have the canon of Scripture, that prophet, prophetic ministry, and the gift of prophecy are no longer needed. The Scripture declares that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13 and 8. He ministered, wow, the, the Holy Spirit is something else, because he told me to bring it to a close and have Let's go forth in impartation, and we're right at the end of this chapter anyway. He will not change until the end of all things. If he used prophets and prophetic ministry in those times, he will continue to do so. Christ's ministry to the church will not end until the judgment. Therefore, the ministries of the prophets will not end until that day. God is still using prophets today. 
and we sure going to use them right now. In addition, God is raising up individuals who walk and in, who walk and in and prophetic anointing that his glory may be seen in all. Okay, so at this time, we're going to do a little, well, let me not say little. We're going to do an activation exercise. We're going to operate and move in under the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is present because we have a lot of prophets that are on the line right now, and we're testifying of Jesus, which the Bible says is the spirit of prophecy. Now, I need one individual who is going to be the recipient of the prophetic word. What I'm going to do, as you present yourself, one person, we're going to, one by one, begin to prophesy to you. All right? So who is the individual that's going to step in the circle right now to receive the prophetic word? I will. Who, DJ, who DJ. Oh, I will say. Okay. <laughs> okay. If we have enough time, we'll, we'll do um, a few more. All right. DJ. All right. Now, what we're going to do, I will start first as I'm praying and as I'm prophesying to her. You know, get get in the comfortable space if you can. Remove all distractions. Close your eyes if necessary. And begin to speak and ask the Lord for a word for this year. Um, It may come to you as an image. You may hear literal words for her. You may get actually one word for her that God is going to give you. But I'm confident that as you're praying, you're, you're going to hear something or see something or experience something or feel something for her that God wants you to share with her, okay? I think that's simple enough. I don't think I need to go into any more details. Don't try to compare yourself to me, anybody else. Try to prophesy along. Like, no, 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 no. You, you share whatever it is that the Lord gives you for DJ, okay? No matter how strong it doesn't, it's, it's, it's not insignificant, all right? I'm teaching you and training you to flow like how you flow, not like nobody else. Find your flow. Amen. Let's begin. And please, don't be scared. I don't want to listen. This is a <laughs> safe environment, okay? Because I know some of you are, oh, I'm not about. Listen, the spirit of prophecy is here. By faith, jump in. God going God to show you something for her. So now, begin to start praying for her. You, you know, don't pray out loud, but pray in your heart because I don't want to be distracted while I'm ministering to her. And as I'm done, I'm going to ask the person, the next, whoever, you know, has a the Lord for her to send it to her, okay? Father, we thank you right now. We just give you praise. Thank you for this wonderful moment um, that you are calling us to activate and step out in faith to operate as prophets, operate as a prophetic unit, operate in the gift of prophecy. We thank you for the gene right now. We thank you for all that you are doing in her life and what you're going to do right now. And your shoes made me pray. And immediately, the gene as I ever get to pray, I see you sitting in like a lotus position. Almost like you're meditating. And I see you in this, uh, like a tan dress. It's very long. It's like maybe down, little, little, little past your calf. Little past your calf. It's a nice, comfortable, very soft, breathable gown that you're in, like a tan color, or, bay, or at least like a maybe beige color. And you're sitting in a lotus position, you're meditating, and I see the sun shining on top of you, the warm sun shining on top of you. And I believe that means to you the Lord is overshadowing you with, I hear the word grace, and he's really illuminating at this particular time and season in your life, his heart for you, his mind for you, his place that he's called you to. And it's just a sweet smile on your face because you're receiving it like sweet honey, just like sweet food, just like mm, 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 it's just so good. And you're just enjoying your time of solitude with the Lord. And he's really ministering and pouring into you and loving on you. And I want you to be encouraged and know that God is really overshadowing you. There's a glow on you. There's an anointing that he's pouring upon you. There's a fresh anointing that he's pouring upon you in this time. 
in this season. And this is the time of season for you to really, really receive that and make that time for the meditation that he's really pouring out and giving it to you in this season. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Did that, did that, was that, did that resonate with you? Yes. Yes, it did. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. I want the next prophet to come forth. Anybody else that heard anything for the Zoom, received anything from the Lord, please share it right now with the DJ. I know in this whole activation thing, we got to walk by faith. <laughs> That's a big thing. Walk by faith. And I'll be honest, I'll be afraid sometimes if I don't know if I'm saying it right, and then I do be saying it right. So when you say confidence, that's big. I get why God's saying that. I understand. So um, can you please tell me me your name again? I'm so sorry. I didn't catch it. No worries. It's Dejean, but I also go by DJ. Okay. So... um, I believe uh, in Jesus' name that the Lord was uh, letting me know that, I don't know, you're in the process of um, seeking him for some direction and guidance. And this is a time where um, his peace, his peace, you need his peace, and his peace is resting upon you. I don't. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know the situation. I don't know what it is, but um, I believe that's what I got. I'm trying to walk my faith in this peace and direction and guidance. I don't know if that's right, love, but I'm trying. <laughs> it's direct. It is so direct. <laughs> okay. Think, thank you for that. It, it's spot on with with the, uh, you know, kind of what I'm going through. So uh, that's mm-hmm. that's definitely the right direction. Amen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, a little, little side note, just like that's why I said, whatever impressions you have that come, you just release it, even if it's, I don't know, if it's an impression and it's coming from a pure place and you know you're not making it up in your head, you understand know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's just coming to you spiritually, you flow with that. And the more you, that's what I said, practice, the more you, um, you practice that, the more you, the more you get in tune with it, the more strong it gets. Like I said, the more um, confident. Because when I first started, it was, it was, yeah, it was kind of nervous, and you was wondering, is this coming out of my own head? But the more you practice, the more confidence you get, the more it starts to flow, and you find out that God is accurate. It, it ain't you, but you're just, you're just opening more of yourself. You're opening more of your gifts to God. You're, op- you're, you're opening more of yourself to allow to flow through. And you find out that God speaks directly <laughs> to that person's need. They'd be like, oh, my God, what in the <laughs> world? I'm getting chills right now. You know what I mean? And I, I, I'd be excited, too. I'd be like, I don't know. It just came to me. I, can't, I, I know I don't know. It just came, and I'm just telling you what God said. I'm just telling you. Amen. So like, like I said last week, and this will help you, some of you, you hear the word, and some of you are more visual. You see visions. You see, you know, what God is painting before you for the person. Amen. Thank you, um, Prophet Daily. Hallelujah. The, the next the next prophet. What do you have for Sister Zoom? What is the prophet of the Lord is here to tell? Don't be afraid. There's no place to fear. I would say okay. go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Should I go or Go ahead, Will. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So what I saw, or I think I saw, was the Peter Patter the uh, business, and pretty much not to be worried about um, about the the spots being filled and being able, pretty much that it will be prosperous, and to just trust, and it will, he will establish the the way of the business. Are you still there? Wow, William. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so William, let's, let's, let's dissect this. Um, is this something that you 
saw on the, your mental screen, or was it something that you felt like a knowing, like an impression? It was, um, I was a little nervous, so I kept praying and asking. And then um, I saw like a small flash of the tree branch of the um, the business design. And pretty much, I can't remember clearly, but I just, um, I just, it's like a, not to worry about the, the, not to worry about the fact that it's not, it hasn't started off yet or it's that it's going to like, not to worry about that, just trust in God and it'll happen. Right. See that? So the purpose of me doing that is helping to allow you to see how see the science of how your how your gift works. And it could it could that could just be it's almost like Russian roulette or Pandora's box. Like you don't really because you, you're gonna see as you operate more in the gifting that you notice your strength, right? How it, it it'll come to you in a common way a lot of times. And then you're going to notice there's sometimes where the flow is just like different. And you're like, Lord, listen, Lord, I'm way out here. You have to help me. I don't know where I'm at right now, but I'm somewhere. Just hold my hand, Jesus. Right? So a lot of times I get um, what I call a knowing. Now, a knowing is you don't have no stimulus. You're not hearing in the spirit. You're not seeing in the spirit. You ain't smelling. You ain't tasting. You ain't fit, touching in the spirit. But it's like a it's like a knowing. You just know it to be true, right? And sometimes it don't make no sense, but you just know that you just know that you know that you know that it's true. And then from there, it translates into any one of those senses, right? So it'd be like, man, I know I know God loves to be like that. I know he really, I just know. I, and then it, trans, it goes into a visit, and then he shows me. You see? So for you, it might be, yeah, I know this guy's going to do that after they do and then, And then you start hearing the, like he, hearing the word. It may come, like, audible. You may hear it as the ear, or the word may um, come to you how to translate it to the recipient. So he... Saw the, saw the logo, which is the logo of a tree, of her business. Then he started to hear all the words came to him. Do not worry about the finances, if it's going to prosper. Everything is going to be in divine order, basically. So that lets the G know, DJ know, just trust God, relax, keep on praying, keep on speaking in faith. God's with you in this time, although you do not see right now, have faith that it's going to work out. Can I ask right? a question? I got to... Sure, go ahead. I, I was going to ask, given, given that I know DJ, would I, um, would I be biased in that sense, or is it just still natural? Um, most, most definitely. There's definitely um, biases that come up when you know the person personally. Absolutely. There's a bias can definitely influence um, your processing, and that's why you have to really be um, meticulous about, like, okay, this is me knowing her, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? But like I said, as you practice it, you, your discernment will get stronger. You'll know, okay, that's just you, or it's really God saying something to tell her. Because sometimes he'll tell you something, and you already told him, but he wants you to reiterate it, so it'll come up again. Like I don't know, Gene. Like I know I told you this before, but God is telling me to tell you again. So most def- most definitely. But I mean, I wouldn't be too too worried about that. Sometimes with the prophetic, the less you know, is better. That way you don't have to feel like you know what I mean. Okay, it's because I already know. That's why I'm telling you. But no, God God will still use the prophetic in friendship. It gets sticky sometimes, but He will still use the prophetic, although you're good friends with her. Yeah. Okay, good. Because in, in the meet or while praying and asking. Um, I thought of something at first, or I saw a bird or the eagle, but that's because of the conversation we had. And then I kept saying, God, I don't know if this is it, blah, blah. And then that's when I saw the tree. And then as I'm just continuously praying about it, it's like my mind um, 
cold dogs, and that's the only thing I keep thinking about is if there's nothing else I'm going to give you, this is it, this is it. So. Yeah, and when that happens, you you stop. You don't push. You don't push the envelope because a lot, a lot of times, um, like when I'm prophesying to someone, like I I feel, like I know when that flow cuts off. And when and, and listen, it is so. Everyone, listen. This is so important. When you feel that flow cut off, like there's nothing more to say to that person as far as stop. Don't go. Don't go. If if you don't get anything else. Do not overstep that boundary because then you go and, and you start prophesying out of your own head and your own heart, and the devil gets involved in it. So mm. anytime you're prophesying, and um, you, you, you're gonna feel it. It's like you're gonna like that's that, that's all I got. Don't don't. And sometimes people they want to know. Wait wait, tell me more, tell me more. If God is giving you a cutoff notice, baby, don't. Just like this, bro. I don't see no more. I, I don't want to get in trouble with God. That's all he gave me. Like. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because it's not about you again. Remember, you're just the, the mouthpiece. And if that's all God wants to talk about today, that's it. There's another day. You understand? Your life is like a book. God knows every page. He knows every paragraph. He knows every chapter. He can speak when he wants to. And sometimes he'll reiterate or sometimes it'll be something totally new. But when you feel that cut off, stop. Don't pop that no more. Hmm. Okay. Very, very important. Very important. If you don't have nothing, that's what I said in the beginning. Shut up. Don't say nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have it, you ain't got it. Straight up. You know? Even though I may push you and stuff like that, but if you honestly, you're just not getting anything, never, 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 ever, ever for No problem. Never. Hallelujah. All right. Are there any more prophets? Any more prophets with a prophetic word? Just to any impressions you would see? Anybody else? Um, this is Taisha. I just felt um, peace when you were praying for her. So I just uh, believe that God wants to know that, that God wants her to know that he's giving her peace. Mm-hmm. And that's all I, that that's all I receive. That's 100% fine. These days, is that true? Yes, yeah, yeah, right thank you. Yeah. See, so all right. If, if anyone, if you're noticing, there's a common thread of of what peace. There's a common thread, peace. God keeps. So that's one common thing that keeps showing up. Because like I said, all of our prophecies are pieces for presentation of peace. But one main thing. All right. Like if God drew a portrait, a painting, or something. The title above it would be what? Yes, you guessed it. Peace. <laughs> Hold on. Let, the, ooh, Jesus. I'm glad he made me a rapper because my mind could put this together together. <laughs> now listen. I saw I shared the vision about her sitting in the grass, the you know cross legged position meditating, and the, the a beautiful golden light shining on her eyes closed, peaceful smile on her face. Um, they at least came with a piece again, clarity, God's, God's resting on you. Peace, again. William came with, I saw the tree. Peace, again. Have a peace of mind. God got this. Now let's put it all together. You're in a lotus position sitting down right now, so I can meditate in peace and smile, glorious light shining on you. And the, your, the tree is right behind you. Did y'all see the portrait I just painted? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a tree symbolizes stability. It also symbolizes wisdom, elderly wisdom, because a tree is old. Mm. What else does it symbolize? The tree goes through seasons, but it always, mm, these are feel anointed. The tree always reproduces itself in the warmer season. My, 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 my. So though your tree has no leaves right now, DJ, though the business ain't got no leaves right now, God is saying be at peace because the leaves are going to come in the season. It's going to be an abundance of leaves. Amen. Oh, my God. 
And Travis, another thing too for you, DJ. A tree. Think about it. A tree. What? It, what? How does it grow? It digs its roots into the ground. And if you go and touch a tree right now, is the tree going to fall? No. That tree is firmly rooted and strong, firm, immovable, unshakable. You can't knock a tree down by pushing it. Literally, if you go touch a tree right now, you can't. So think of yourself like that. Being, it's in the Bible, too, in Colossians. Colossian, thank you, Lord. Being firmly rooted in the Lord, grounded in Jesus' name. I'm sorry, you guys. I just have to throw that out there. That's what I saw. Amen. It's funny that the tree comes up um, as I'm trying to tie everything that you guys have saw and said. Um and a couple of months back, it was prophesied to me that, you know, uh, I was Esther. And I was thinking about the family tree of Esther. I don't know if anyone's familiar with her um, her part in the Bible. But, um, but yes, with the king. But um, she, you know, was pretty much thought of as a smaller leaf but on a huge oak tree. Wow. And, and her role became, you know, just that big. And so as mm-hmm. I'm listening to what you saw, that's all I keep thinking about or that's all that, 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 that that's coming to me. And, um, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what you guys were able to do for me. Wow, wow, wow. I kept it's seeing the word oak tree, but I just wasn't sure to say it. So I was thinking, Lord, you can give me any tree while oak tree. So when you confirmed oak tree, I was like, okay, I saw that word correctly. It's spot on. Spot on, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And a matter of fact, I don't know what oak tree looks like, but the, the logo kind of looks like one. It's a big tree, right? Yeah. Oh yep. You see what I'm saying? Oh my! I've had to sit and just like breathe. Oh. That's what I live for, y'all. That's what I live for. So there's so many people out there right now. They they ain't got the opportunity. Don't nobody want to hear them. I'll give you a chance to speak. Because I know how it feels. I know how it feels to be in, to feel insignificant, to be made to feel that way. Oh, that's a charity. He's a weirdo. That's just me. I know how it feels to walk past someone and you just feel their spirit rejecting you. They don't even know you. To be attacked mentally. Verbally by someone that don't know you, but for some reason they, they just don't like. It. I know how it feels. So your experience is never just because God is going to put you through it. It's for, it's for somebody or a group of people. Remember, you are a construction worker. You're going to build. You're building right now. You're going to build a person or a group of people. God will make that clear to you, you know, whether it's your per- oh, Some of y'all just called to build your house. Some of y'all will build a company. Some of y'all will build a community, a church. You'll find, you'll find it. But God wants you to, he wants to show you your tools first, get you familiarized, then he's going to send you out to the field. He's not sending you out unprepared. Send you out as a workman, Second Timothy two fifteen, rightly dividing the word of truth. Somebody who don't need to be ashamed of themselves, <laughs> their gifts, what they've been through. Hello, somebody. We got some. We got some stories on this phone. Oh no. Okay, church folks can handle that. We got some stories on this phone. You hear me? So it's 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 even. Last night I was thinking of the Holy Spirit started ministering to me. He said, son, he said, your life is really about to make sense. It's really, it had made, it, it, it been, for a long time, it's just game to make a sense. But it's, when I, when I, when I'm finished with you, 
you're going to fall out because it's all going to make sense. You're going to get the why to every question. Well, why this happened? Why I don't like why this and why I'm not interested? It's, you're, going to, you're going to see why. You're going to see that I, you are so prepared it wasn't even funny. That's the same word I shared with you guys. Hallelujah. All right, anybody else? Any other problems? They got me in the morning. Oh, wait, hold on. So, William, you said you saw that hawk again, right? In the vision, the, the hawk came up to you again, too? Like, it, it came up before you? It's funny you just said that I just saw a hawk fly. I'm outside in my car, so I just saw a hawk fly out. <laughs> I'm going to throw this phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, okay, so I, so you already answered my question. I was talking about seriously, but it's a manifest of physical. Taisha, you still here? I knew you were so, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It's a hawk right outside my door, painted right outside my front door. They painted it a don't few get, weeks ago. Don't get scared, y'all. Don't get scared. That's what you call miracle signs and wonders. Get excited. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Now, I... Now, I met Tyson on Periscope. I was outside prophesying and just praying for people. Now, Tyson, I want you to tell them the testimony of what, what, what manifested while I was praying for you. Tell them what happened. When he was praying for me, um, he saw a but he was he was talking about a butterfly and uh, it flew right past him. And then um, for weeks after that, it's like every day I was seeing butterflies just around me, and I never was. I never saw them in that area at, at my job. I would never see butterflies, but I just kept seeing them. I still see them now. I might see one or two, but I would see a lot of butterflies. So that's amazing. God is so amazing. Wow. Right. See, so, so, and I was, so what happened? So basically, I was probably the guy who showed me a butterfly, you know, symbolized, and butterfly symbolized freedom, um, deliverance, coming out of your shell. And stuff like that. It's a great symbol for that. And then the butterfly flew right, literally across my face. <laughs> I was tripping. I was tripping. So, you know, God, He's amazing. It just shows that I'm here. I'm alive. I'm present. I'm listening to everything that's going on. I'm concerned. And I'm and when because you're my servant, all of you on this line because you're His servant, He gonna back you up. He's going to he's going to confirm what it is you speak and do in his name. Amen. Because it's about his glory, but he's also concerned he wants to confirm you to prove that you are his servant. Because he he married you. You have his name. Spiritually, that is. Some of you have his name actually in your name. For some of you your name ends with Yah or has Yah in it. Or L in it. Mm. Yeah, he he's married. You his you his wife. You you you. We all we 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 his bride. So when you come, you step up in the place. You ain't gotta say I come up in here. In Jesus name. You could you could if you want, but you don't have to. But why? Because you already have his name. So you're already walking in his name. You already get access to his bank account. Mm-hmm. You ever you ever catch that? <clears throat> I don't have to ask him for permission. I just swipe the card. He gave me the card. Already. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Throw it in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? You you got you got the access because you was you you was you was you was boo thing. You've been good to him, and he's been good to you. You you got access. You've got access to the mind of God. Always remember that. Hallelujah. Anybody else that ain't prophesied yet? I'm, I'm still tripping off this hawk. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I know we have those in New York, but I mean, it's cold, so I ain't supposed to see it. <laughs> wow. You know? I ain't supposed to see that. That's just, I'm going to research that because I, 
I'm receiving it for me too. I'm receiving it for me too. Especially you, baby. So, I didn't see you on the message. Oh, you did? Okay, I'm I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, especially you, Billy. You still in Southern, um, Southern Cali, right? Yeah. Hmm? Is you still there? I'm sorry. What did you say? I think you're still in Southern Cali, right? Yeah, I just I came back last week on Saturday when God told me to go. He, no, he told me to go right after my dad died. I didn't understand it. He just told me to go. So I'm at my dad's house alone. But he's got me here alone for a reason. I just don't know why. <laughs> right, right. But you thought he said a whole bunch of horses. So that's kind of like desert, little bit area over there. I was going to step outside because I, I ain't trying to tell everybody what's going on. I'm sorry. Another thing as we're on her too, I was like, I was hoping in Jesus' name. I'm just being honest, Travis. I was hoping in Jesus' name. I've been thinking about you, and I was like, Lord, I hope Travis will pray for me because I don't know what I'm going through. I don't know what I'm going through at all. And I've been thinking about going outside because God's got me like on this treasure hunt because my dad left something in his house that God wants me to find. That's another reason why he's got me alone. And uh, he told me not to be anxious. And to be still. But I've been having dreams about my dad's house for four years now. And when God shows me consistent dreams like that, he's telling me something. I don't know what he's saying, and I'm not trying to get frustrated. But I've been looking in, like, these key places where my dad would leave something. But for, my dad was, for some reason, a secretive man. So if him passing away, he probably would have never told nobody where he left so-and-so or whatever he left. So I keep looking at the backyard like I need to go outside. And I'm going to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to share throw all that out there. I'm just, I'm just, I don't, I'm just going through a lot right now. I'm sorry. No, I don't all think right. it's because now you, you have, you have more than enough people to help you pray for the answer that you're looking for, or at least as the slightest clue for where you do need to look. And I'll definitely say a prayer for you. Thank you. And then I feel like yeah. crying right now because I haven't cried, and I don't know why I haven't cried yet. And now I feel like crying right now. <clears throat> and on, t- on top of that, I-, I am pregnant right now, too, so I'm just going through a lot of uh, emotions and hormones and just there's a lot of stuff going on. We're having a funeral the next week, and all these if things I are may- going on with my sister, too. Hmm? If I may just just speak on that part, because when you said that, you know, he has you out there for a long, but now you're getting emotional to this point, I feel like that pretty much thinking that you're not alone. And this is why he's letting you have that release on the line with us. Amen. Go, go right in. Go right in. Right <laughs> <laughs> We're with you, sister. We are. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Lord. Go right ahead, Sister Jay. You can go pray. pray. Um. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You ready for this? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to step forward? They, so they leave. I was going to choose her next to go in the circle, and they will close. Hallelujah. So anybody want to step forth and do the first prayer, first uh, word of the Lord, word of encouragement, to what we did last time? You can go ahead and do that now. Father, I thank you for bringing us together. 
to bring your loved ones together, Lord, and allowing us to commune and think of you and meditate on your word. I pray that you continuously download your information within our minds, that we may speak it, that we may hear your words, and we may hear your voice and see you, Lord. I ask that you strengthen each and every one of us, know everything that we're going through, the journeys that we are going through. But I ask you that to allow us to be support for each other and to also send your angels to support us. And I pray in your holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody with any impression from the Lord for the least? Any prophetic word, any vision, anything? I guess I'll go first, like the last time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for uh, this treasure hunt. There is something that you will find. There is something that you will find. I don't know what it is, but it's something that you will find. And it's going to blow your mind. (laughs) But you you are destined to find it. I think you are destined to find it. Mm -hmm. I was so much as if if you were to find it while he was alive, I don't think you could handle it. <laughs> I'm going to find. It. Yeah, you need to spend time in the backyard. <laughs> you need to spend more time in the backyard. <laughs> Daddy's gonna, God's gonna meet you out there. That's going to be his little hangout spot for you and the people. You and him. Yeah. You have a do you have a doll? Do I have a doll? <laughs> a doll, like a doll. We used to have a dog years ago. There's still, for some reason, there's still a dog house on the side of the house. <laughs> You're going to get another dog. I mean, how are you going to get it? If you're going to buy it for the gift. It's a large size dog. I'm going to get another dog. Yeah. You're going to be a, a little, you're going to be a companion to you. Yeah. And what, and what I see in the vision of your belly is at this point is real big. How I see it in the and you're in the backyard talking to the Lord. The dog is out there chilling. Clean. <laughs> Your sons are out there too, playing with them. Amen. And I hear the Lord say that your dad has not left your side. Only in the body. But in the spirit, he's always with you. He's not dead, truly not dead. He's with the Lord, but he is alive, just in that dimension. (laughs) Watching over you, he's not deep, hallelujah. I just get this impression. I don't want anybody thinking I'm, you know, I'm not a necromancer, you know, people that talk dead people, but he's not dead. I get the impression it's like, there's so much I wanted to tell you. I'm, I'm so sorry that I was not I'm trying to think it's choked up. Mm. I'm trying to think it's choked up here. There's so much I wanted to tell you, and I'm so sorry. 
I'm so sorry that our relationship never really rekindled and got to the place where I knew that it could have been. I'm so sorry, my daughter. I wish that I could have gotten over whatever pride or hurdle and really expressed to you my love and express my deep regret that I was never there for you the way that I should have been. And that you had to go and deal with things on your own when I could have been there for you. I, I do apologize to you. And I want you to know that I love you. I appreciate you. I had to leave this body, but I'm I'm there. I'm with the Lord. Interceding over you. Covering you with my prayers. I want you to continue the journey that you're on with the Lord. Continue continue the journey. Hey Katiriosa. Yes, Lord. Continue the journey that you're on right now. Continue the journey that you're on with the Lord. I'm rooting for you. Heaven is rooting for you. <laughs> and on this side, on this side of heaven, you'll be here with us soon. Because in heaven, time is much shorter compared to when <laughs> And I'll be at the gate waiting for you personally. But I want you to be encouraged. Don't cry for me. I'm at peace. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got me crying all over the stone, Lord. Finally. I may add something. Sure, did, did, you say, did you have twins in your stomach? Or you're pregnant with twins? What? I had a dream like two weeks ago. I had twin girls, but I'm like, what? <laughs> no one. I heard twins too. What? Said, <laughs> but when, when you said that, something came to me as in, um, well, I know that God is building up a remnant or getting together a remnant, and pretty much, I felt like it. It was saying that they are part of that remnant. And they shall be taught in his ways. Mm. How glory to God. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm having yet, but I'm like, Lord, you freaking me out about the twins, baby. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. Don't wait for me to tell you to go. <laughs> Share what you got. So, Taisha, you say you heard twins, so you say you felt twins, too. I, when she was speaking earlier, I heard twins. That's all I heard when she was talking earlier, when she was telling us about why she was, that she was there and um, that, you know, it was something that she needed to find there. That's what I heard when she was speaking. Mm. I remember telling Mark when I had that dream, because that's how God maybe speaks to me through dreams and visions. The dream that I had was I had a I had a baby girl and I had another baby girl, which was smaller, but both the kids were healthy. And I'm like, Lord, so far we are you seen two on the screen, but I haven't been to the doctors in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I look like I'm coming to I'm like, oh, God, mercy. <laughs> That's it's funny you say that because I've had the dream too. I've had the same dream, but I wasn't <laughs> delivering. I was just told I was having two minutes in my dream. <sighs> okay, well. <laughs> I I just saw six more hawks outside. <laughs> we are these we are these hawks today, man. How many of us are on here? 
don't know. Hold on, let me see. I think I think there's a button I can press. I can check. Let me press it right now. Mom. Um, Mom. Five, five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just us. It's just, it's just us. Yeah. It's just us. Nobody else. Me, William, Jason. That's five. It's just us. So that's eight. That's that's a total of eight hawks. I seen the first <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, eight. Eight is number new beginning. So um, this is a new beginning for all of us. Amen. Hey, um, Travis, there's something I want to also share with you guys. I just want to say thank you so much because I know this is random. I don't know <laughs> what God is doing, but I most appreciate it, and I'm not going to let the enemy lie to me. Whatever God wants to do, whatever God wants to do. And uh, I needed this release in Jesus' name, and I'm most grateful. May the Lord bless you all. I wanted to share something about what you said. Um, I keep wanting to call you Mark Travis. I'm sorry. What, what the Lord said about this backyard, what, I got saved in this house. My dad went and got me four years ago from Las Vegas from my mom. He brought me here and he handed me a Bible. I never knew I was going to read and get saved in my room in this house. And I always spent my time outside in that backyard talking and praying with God. <laughs> So this is where it all started, this house, my journey with Christ Jesus. Amen. You see why I like, I just like, because you be saying stuff and don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just coming from a place. You know you, you know you hear it, you know you but And then when they tell you, you be like, you just as crying on the phone like them. You be like, I'm, you know, you can't really try to understand it. You just have to relate it because I'm saying, I'm saying what I see. <laughs> okay, I see you in the backyard. It's nice and sunny out there. You sitting, but you real pregnant. The belly is huge. But you out there, you know, talking to Jesus with the dog. And you come telling us that's where it all started. We used to be in that same backyard. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's saying go back. That's why you keep feeling go back to it. Mm-hmm. There's something you're gonna find. I don't know if it's gonna be, be, be in the backyard. I just hear I just heard it as stuff there's something you're going to find. You were destined to find it, whatever it is, it or it's the day or you know, I don't know. Not really <laughs> it's not really my job to interpret every vision and thing I hear, just to relay. Leave it up to the person of God. God, he'll confirm um, what it is. Um, that's it. And then, if, again, like you couldn't find it with your dad around for whatever reason. Because for whatever reason, you wouldn't be able to handle it. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm just relaying the message. You're just relaying the message. This is what I hear. This is what I hear. This is what I hear. And the more, like I said, he's practicing getting tuned with yourself and how your gift is working through you, more confidence comes and you start to understand, okay, this is how my gift works. Besides, and then, like I said, every now and again, you get a different flow. I was relaying the message that I was feeling from heaven. And it's almost like I felt like this, her father, I don't want to sound creepy or demonic, but it's almost like I felt her father's spirit just like flowing through me like Speaking, like tell us. You know, I'm sorry, um, <coughs> Travis. The Lord just revealed that secret to me the other day. That exactly what you're saying <laughs> about my dad's spirit. He just revealed that secret to me that that's possible. I just learned that the other day, so I don't find it strange. It's not demonic. It's, it's real. You see, now if I go to some certain circles, you already know what they're going to think. But <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not dead. Now, there are people that die and they're sitting there dead. But what the Bible said, you know, spiritually they're dead. They may be alive, 
burning, whatever, but, you know, they're dead, per, you know, per se. He is not dead. But those that have went on in the Lord, they're not really not dead. They just, mm-hmm. they just left the physical body, and they're continuing to be with the Lord. Okay. Even with the Lord with, yeah, with the Lord, there's no mm-hmm. death, there's only life. So he's not dead. You see, so like as we said, that's possible. They can give you um, a message, a parody, and a dream. Certain times the Lord permits it. It probably won't be like you know a constant thing. Sometimes you'll just feel like um, because you have to think about it. Like Jesus said, when they when we pass on, we become like the angels. There's there's so there's so much depth to that. Don't angels watch over us and protect us and pray over us and intercede over us? So why would yeah. someone that went under the Lord be any good? It's a treasure. It's it's just like how we all have different gifts in the Lord. It's like a it's like a new treasure that the Lord allows you to know. The more you grow in Him, the more things He'll allow you to know that you didn't think were possible. But all things are possible in God. That's what He uh, told me. Yeah. God works on his line today, so you can release some of that and get and get edified, comforted, exhorted, strengthened, poured in. Are you ready to kick some more devil tail? <laughs> Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know. I, I just feel let to pull on DJ for a second. DJ, you still here? DJ. Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm. I'm oh, here. Yeah. I'm here. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm here. Do you have anything for anything else? I, I feel you. Seriously, I don't know. What's up. Do you have anything else for her? Um. Yeah. When she was speaking, um, when she was speaking about not being sure, um, I feel like when you, like one of the things that you were speaking of earlier when we were talking about confidence. Um, yeah. I feel like the reason why she, well, the reason why you haven't found it yet is because you're not prepared. You're not prepared for what you'll find yet. So everything that we're bringing to you <laughs> in the, and, and also your relationship um, with your sister, because oh, you, you mentioned that she's, she's a little lost as well or um, unsure. Maybe that's something that you guys can use as a bonding activity, which will help you get prepared to for what you'll find, because you may need that relationship later. Mm. The reason why you picked that up is because my dad left my sister beneficiary over everything, mm-hmm. and my sister has been acting very secretive, and she hasn't been telling me anything that's in his account, what the policy is. What what's going on? She's keeping everything to herself, and mm-hmm. we're all me and all my family were praying for her salvation. The Lord would have mercy because He only knows her intentions and motives. And I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of the best of my sister that she wouldn't just take money and run. So I'm like, Lord, you're going to work this thing out for our good. I'm not going to believe that that's going to happen. I'm going to believe that Your will is going to be done in this because money makes people do crazy things, and I don't love money, Lord. So that's why you why picked you that up. Yeah. I think part of the part of the thing with the um although you and your sister are not are not twins, are you guys close in age? Um, she's two years older than me, so yeah, we're kinda of close in okay. age. Yeah, I think um I think that's another thing because of the there was a height well, there was a height difference in the two girls. Or, or just a difference that let me know that they're not the same. So I don't think it's your kids, and I think it's just the, the two of the relationships, how, like, they're apart right now. But, but I feel like maybe you should reach out to her or try a different approach to, to you guys coming together on this. I, I know that everybody in my family wants to reach out to her in an angry way. But by God's yeah. grace, I've been reaching out to her in a loving way, just calm with everything, not forceful. Because mm-hmm. everybody wants me to act a certain way, and I'm like, no, that's not the heart God has given me. I'm not going to act crazy. So I approach her with, hey, you know what's going on, and what's that, what's that? I don't approach her with anger, and I thank yeah. God for that. 
So that part has been, he's been helping me in that. I'm not forcing her with anything. That's great. That's amazing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Man, this is, this is, this is great. This is great. This is great. This is great. I'm, trust me, I'm being blessed listening to this. I'm being blessed listening to this. Y'all go through it. And clone. Man, this is good. All right. Any last questions? Any last comments before we close? Hmm? Any last questions or comments before we close? I've been blessed. This has been wonderful in Jesus' name. I can't wait for the next session. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, has been, this has been a great session. You know, thank you to everyone that's, that's here. It's been great. Thank you for your obedience, Travis. May the Lord continue to just move in a mighty way in your life. May he continue to build you up as a great man of God he's called you to be. Thank you, Lord, for uh, Travis's humility. He's very meek in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings and that he's going to be prosperous in all his ways. I thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper in Jesus' name. He's going to be who you call him to be. What's for him is going to be for him. I thank you, Lord God, for removing all the obstacles and things out of his way, any hindrances, Lord. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing to him. Please continue to protect him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> such a blessing. It was such a blessing being on here and just um, learning and just the Lord just moving by his spirit. It just blessed me. Amen. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, next week we will continue. Next week we will get into this week. We'll be dealing with the office of the process. Because remember, I was saying that there's a, there's a slight difference um, between those who have a prophetic anointing or those who have a gift. We're going to deal with the office now. And then at this point, you'll be able to see um, where you stand whether you are an actual prophet, prophetess, or just someone who operates in the gift of prophecy. So it's definitely very excited. Please definitely share. When I put the, up, when I put the update out, it'll probably be a day or two before the class. Please share on your page, text, you know, invite people that may be interested in those things. Also, a little later today, I'm out and about now, I'm going to post the link to the recording. You, you, you're you going to want to get that recording. So I'm going to post a link that's going to lead you to a site. What you do is you, whether you're on a phone or tablet or computer, you, you um, hold on to the play button and it's going to bring up a little menu. You hit um, save, it's probably going to say save video or save target or something like that. And it will download that file. That way you have that audio file because after 30 days, it'll delete it out of the system that I'm using now, the conference is going to be leader. So you want to make sure you get that recording. So if you okay. follow me on Facebook with all of you are, look out for that on that link. All right. So thank you, you guys welcome. again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your Sabbath. Enjoy your rest of the Lord until we meet again next week. All right? Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you. Bye, guys. Amen. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye